And he walked in and he was like, <laughs> when your fucking hero laughs at you, oh, that's there's, so cool. there's nothing, no knife that cuts deeper through your heart than that. Eddie Van Halen. Um, I, I mean, can you remember the first time that you met Eddie? Yeah. Yes. Um, it was uh, it was at a Van Halen rehearsal that I was going to that I didn't know I was going to. Uh, I was I was in L.A. and very young uh, and doing. We just finished wrapping up Porn Graffiti. We recorded in the Valley and then I got a, a call from Dweezil Zappa, who I knew was a bit of an extreme fan from the first album. But he, he, he said, would you be down to producing my solo record? And I was just like, what? I was like, okay, I'm in LA and I finish. Everybody went home and I stayed in the apartment I was in and was going to the studio with him every day to produce an album called Confessions that I'm very proud of. It's a really cool album. He had so many guests on there. Like I met so many, so many of my heroes during that period. We were on our way to rehearsal one day and he was like, he would pick me up, you know, cause I just, you know, it was like, he goes, don't bother getting a rental. We'll go to the studio every day. I got a car, I live here. He picked me up because I got to stop at one, 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 I got to make a stop. I got to grab a guitar or some shit, some bullshit story that he told me. And I'll never forget going into this big parking lot in this place called, I think it was Center Staging. I'm not sure in LA because I've been there since. But walking in and I'm hearing, it's a rehearsal space, but I'm hearing music coming through different places. And he opens the door. And the first thing I see, even though they're all rehearsing, is Eddie fucking playing and the whole Van Halen band rehearsing for a tour. That's up. Uh I mean, and talk about, it's enough that you're seeing that, but talk about not being told. Yeah. And walking in and seeing him, the guy, <laughs> and hearing that guitar tone, the amps right in front of you, blowing your fucking head off because that's where you're standing in front. And I was just like, take a breath. Okay, you're here. And, uh, and they were playing and I was just like, I don't know what's about to happen next. I don't know if fucking Eddie knows who I am, hates me, doesn't, I, I don't no idea. Mm -hmm. And, um, and when they finished the song, he came straight to me, like, and I was just like, uh Oh, and he came straight to me. And I guess the theme here is going to be kiss guys, kissing guys on the lips, which I think is amazing anyways. But, uh, they, he, he just planted this big kiss, like, Hey, what's up? And, and I was just like, okay. EVH just kissed me. Hello. And, uh, and then he was like, what's going on? He's like, what's it's so welcoming and so kind. And I just had no idea. You don't know. You just don't know. You know, it's, I've had bad experience. I've had the other side yeah. where somebody basically, you, you go to shake the hand and they fucking look at you and turn away and go, go fuck yourself. I've had that. Yeah. No names, no names need to be mentioned, but I've had those. <laughs> and he was so welcoming. Come on in. And, you know, and then they played a little more and, and I, I used to sit there and imagine, um, man, yes, that's Eddie and this is Van Halen and all, it's amazing. And, but I started fantasizing, you know, the nerdy guitar player in me started fantasizing if everybody would just leave and I could play his rig. And, uh, and I knew that wasn't going to happen until it happened <laughs> until oh, Eddie, until they took a break and they grabbed something and Eddie's grabbing, there was a, I remember a fridge that when you opened it, it was nothing but beer all the way from top to bottom. It was just cans of beer. It looked like something out of a cartoon and they were just grabbing a beer. He's like, yeah, have a beer. I'm like, cool. If Eddie gives you a beer, you have a fucking beer. Yeah. So I'm having a beer and he says, play my ring. I'm like, what? what? I don't, I want to, but in front of you, like I'm supposed to now just pick up a guitar. He goes, yeah, yeah, play. I, I want to try this pedal out. So just play and I'm going to fuck with this pedal. So I'm in this bizarre dream where now I'm like, oh my God, it's finally going to happen. Because when I heard his sound, I'm like, there it is. There's the tone. No excuses. We've been doing this in the studio for a long time where we, we try to A, B to the first VVA, second two, just to get a little bit of a glimpse of like your heroes and what does it sound like in the studio? And, a, you know, we want to get close to that mojo somehow. And, um, and now I, no excuses. His guitar, his cable, his DNA is still on the fucking strings. His, <laughs> it's like the amp, everything. So... I'm like, now I'm like, he's on his knees in front of me, facing the other way, boots some pedal. I'm like, what is happening? And I'm like, he goes, all right, play. And then I'm thinking it all, everything went in slow motion. I'm like, what do you fucking play in front of Eddie Van Halen? Well, like, what, do you, what do you choose? 
Were you gonna you gonna play that A chord? Maybe not. You're gonna play. You're gonna kick it. Yeah, you're gonna. So I remembered we just finished porn uh, porn graffiti, and I I remember like you know what I was. I started playing like a bit of like shit that I do from like get the funk out solo. I'm just I don't know why I just like go for what you know right. (laughs) You know what I mean? I start playing something and I start doing the part of get the funk out where. I had worked out that, you know, in tapping, instead of like doing it in the single strings where a lot of people were doing, it's like, what if I like skip strings? I used to skip strings a lot with my playing anyways, just for fun, like and try to come up with different sounds. And I'm like, oh, I'm gonna do this tapping with like an arpeggio with skipping some strings and doing that. I didn't get the funk out. I started doing that. He stops me and he turns and goes, hey, 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 none of that silly stuff. <laughs> and, I re- and, I, and I just like, was like, I got scared at first and he, he laughed. And then I remembered, and he goes, he goes, nah, man, I'm just fucking with you. And I remembered, as I start keep playing something else, I remembered that a Guitar Player Magazine article had just come out of me, yeah. of saying, of them asking about your heroes and influence. And I said, like, you know, when I do the tapping, when I do tapping, I said, when anybody does tapping, I go, for me, I feel kind of silly doing it. Because right. it sounds, it's Eddie's, it's mm-hmm. Eddie owns it. You know, the second any of us do it, it's like, okay, he's listening to Eddie, even though Eddie wasn't the first to ever tap in the in the world of mankind, but he, it's his. He made it his own. Yeah, he took it out there, didn't he? Big so time. he must have read that. And I just, I was thinking, my God, this guy reads fucking articles. He's like, don't, none of that silly stuff, you know? Yeah. So it was an amazing experience in the end, played, played his rig, but it was amazing until I realized I got really depressed right after I started playing uh because you didn't sound like him sounded just like me yeah and i was just like i get it isn't it yeah i get it i go i get it i get it now so when you so obviously you were saying you were trying to emulate his sound obviously as a kid and then like porno graffiti and stuff and and like trying to get that eddie sound so when you saw his rig and how he had done everything what were you doing wrong but oh, were you doing it right? You know what? It was like, well, I mean, that lesson that I just told you was means that we were all doing it right. Meaning, yeah. I think look, the only things the things you could do, and and I think, you know, I you know, after talking to many guitar players, th- th- there isn't there isn't any guitar player that didn't try to sound like their heroes at some point, especially yeah. especially when you're younger. But what happens is, your heroes and their tones are what you love. But you know that if you love Eddie and Randy Rhodes and, and, and Brian May, there's no way they, none of them sound like each other to begin with, but yet in your mind, they do, <laughs> that makes any sense because it's you like it. So when you put those albums up, especially like an Eddie, the only thing you could take from it is an overall tone, an overall thing that you're doing on the board and maybe with the microphone, or maybe like if you want a brown sound, a bit more of that that thing is that if that's more like you because you'll know right away you try to match it and you're like and you go to play it yourself you're like no this doesn't feel like but it sounds like his Mm -hmm. overall that's when you know then you start going into your world and you're like but i need a little bit more bite there i don't want it to be that brown or i don't want it to be this or i need to be tighter on the bottom end because i play more percussive so slowly you basically zach says it right he goes whenever you listen to a guitar player he goes it's the soup he has this soup analogy. He's like, it's like, we all have different soups, but when you, you taste it, you go like, oh, that's Randy Rhodes. But maybe when you, when you, when you kind of, he does this thing where he like, he goes like, but you know what? I, 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 I taste a little bit of, I taste a little bit of ZZ Top in there. I taste a little bit of Bill, <laughs> there's a little spice of Billy Gibbons. And then there's a little bit of, of Eddie Van Halen in there, but the overall soup, it's, it's Randy Rhodes soup. You know, but our influences are spiced in there and they're in there and you can hear them. And sometimes we tip our hats to them, but you can never, this, the overall soup is not going to be Eddie. It's going to be Nuno, whether he fucking likes it or not, <laughs> whether I like it or not, that's my fucking soup. I can try all day. I can try to be Eddie. I can try to be Warren. I can try to, but once you take all those influences and you make that soup, it becomes hopefully the good news might be the bad news at first, but the good news is that it's yours. It's your fucking soup deal with it (laughs) taste it enjoy it yeah yeah, exactly so did you do what probably a lot of people do to you um like oh how do you play this on that song and 
I did none of that. I've never done any of that to any of people, any of my heroes. I, I just, I just, I, when I meet, when I, like I told you early on when we started this, when I, I don't view myself as that guitar. The first thing I don't think about is guitar. I, hate to, I probably bums guitar players out when I say this, but when I meet Eddie Van Halen, or I, I meet Brian May, or I'm like, I don't think about guitar. I look at them as like, these are, this is the soundtrack to my life. This is my, like, these guys gave me, you know, they, 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 they gave me musical DNA. Like they fathered me, you know, like they're, they're like, they're like a long lost, like they're a part of you. Like they, f they fucked you up. Yeah. Like they, they, they disrupted your life. If you dive in deep enough, it's, I'm not talking about a guitar player that's like, oh, I like that scale he's doing. I'm talking about people that you listen to their music. When I listen to Eddie, when I listen to Van Halen, I don't only listen to Eddie. I know what Eddie's impact is on me, whatever it is, but I also know that I probably feel the same. I was, I was the same way when we toured with Roth or, and I was in the room with Roth. I know there can't be an Eddie without Roth. I know there can't be a Roth without Eddie or an Alex or that feel without Alex, without Eddie. I, there is a DNA pool thing happening here. Yes, Eddie is Eddie because I'm a guitar player. I don't wanna, I don't wanna sound like he's probably not the top of that band, but if I meet the fucking Beatles, if I, 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 you know, it's, I, yeah, I got to hang with Paul McCartney and maybe that was the ultimate for me. But let me tell you something. When I walked into a room in Japan with fucking George Harrison there, I nearly passed the fuck out wow. because, it, because it was the fucking Beatles. It was the Beatles fucking with the Beatles, you know, and, and the music and the songs and they were all in that room and not one could have done it without the other. I don't give a fuck how much anybody wants to say that it's all Eddie or it's all this bullshit. You, when you're in a room with people and you, they might be the, the fucking lead, you, the other person just being in that room and sitting behind the kit or the conversations they have with them, the food they bring, everything they do, they do it together and it could have never happened without the chemistry of that band. I'm telling you, that's the way it is. Do not separate those pieces. You can't, you, know, you can't, you know? So I'm sorry, but for, for me, it was just like, it was just like, I, I just, I wanted to just be around him. I just wanted to take in whatever he had to offer that day and not be like, I didn't go to the past. I didn't go to the future. I was just trying to be as present as possible and just like talk to him and just have a moment with them and remember that moment. And this is pre iPhones and all the bullshit where we didn't think about capturing it. We were just there. Thankfully, we were just there. Yeah. It'd be great for me to show you. Here's that first time I was in the room with him and there's Eddie dialing the thing. But man, that feeling that I have, you could never capture. And just allowing, you know what it is? It's, allow, it's the universe allowing you to be in the room with royalty, your royalty, life's royalty. And it happened to be music, happened to be a guitar player. But man, uh, every time after that that I'd seen, which wasn't many, I still felt the same way. It never got like lesser or like, oh, it's the second time it wore off. Every time was a different, like, I mean, I, got, I have a moment with Eddie fucking treasure it, take it in. And sometimes there was a couple of times he insulted me, but it was real, Okay. but he did it in a playful way. It was about my clothes. It was one time I saw him the second time I saw him, I thought I was going to go in there and I thought I was going to be like in the dressing room. Me and Pat walked in once and I was wearing, it was during punchline. I was fucking going through like a bit of a flare bell bottom phase. And I walked in and I had some, and he walked in and he was like, <laughs> when you're fucking Eddie Van Hill and your hero laughs at you, Oh, that's so cool. There was nothing, no knife that cuts deeper through your heart than that. But I took it and I gave it back. You know me, I yeah. gave it back. So, and, and I was just like, and it was one of those moments where I was like, oh my God, the second I'm in the room, he just humiliated me <laughs> in my clothes. But he was super friendly. He still gave me the biggest hug, but that's Eddie, but that's Eddie being Eddie, right? He yeah. wasn't being, that's why I treasured it. So I was like, all right, you want to be a bro and be like, I'm down, I'm cool. And then we just hung out and, and, and then like, 10 seconds later, I got humiliated again because Sammy Hagar walked in and I told Sammy this, he didn't remember, but I fucking made sure I told him. I was told three weeks before that I was going to interview Eddie Van Halen for Guitar Play Magazine, like I did with Brian. They loved what I did. We, we loved the up and coming into their heroes, what, what you would talk to them about. It was booked. I had my fucking questions down. I was, couldn't sleep at night because I was going to be in a room with Eddie. And Eddie was down. It was a go. I'm talking maybe two weeks before my manager called me and says, you know, I got bad news. Goes, uh, the, the interviews, you're not going to be interviewing Eddie. And I said, oh, it's not happening. He doesn't want to do it. He goes, no, it's happening. I go, so what happened? He goes, 
it's just not you doing it anymore because Eddie didn't want me to do it anymore. He goes, no, he goes, Sammy wants to do it. Oh. And I told Sammy, I go, you're in a band with them. I go, that crushed my soul to be in a room. And cause I knew it was going to be about guitar. It's going to be about the solo. It was going to be about eruption and things and all these different tracks and things that I had questions and it never happened because Sammy's like, well, I play guitar. I'm in a band. Like, what do you mean? Nuno Betancourt's doing, why can't I do it? And I told Sammy this, I love fucking Sammy to death, but I told him, I go, you're crushed. Cause he's probably thinking of it just as like, I want to do it. Like, but he doesn't realize the impact of what that would have been to me as a young guitar player becoming that, that was just, it was pulled from me like two four. <laughs> And, and, and I, it took me a while. I, I, probably, I don't know if I've ever gotten over it, actually. <laughs> but it <laughs> I can still feel it, your pain. It, it, but it took me imagine though, as, as a young player, like being, you know, but but I felt blessed and lucky enough to meet him and, and all that stuff and hang with him. And I was like, okay, so it would have been an interview and we would have nerded out guitar hours. It would have been amazing. But at the end of the day, it, it was, there, that was within 10 minutes. My clothes was being made fun of. Sammy And Sammy comes in and says, hey man, sorry, I beat you out of that interview. And I was just like, Sorry if I'm about to beat your fucking face in right now. I didn't say that, but that's what I was feeling. But then I was like, okay. And then, so then they were getting ready to go on. And Eddie came out with, um, he was wearing something that was a little bit quirky as well. And it was like, you know, like these white, like island pants with these, he used to wear the stockings. Remember that Raggedy Ann stockings back then? And I went, that's what you're going on stage with? I said that to my fucking, I, forget hero. I said that to Eddie Van Halen. I made fun of Eddie Van Halen right before he went on stage. I don't know what the fuck came over me, but I was just like, wait, you're making fun, you're making fun of me and that's what you're wearing on stage? And he started laughing, he goes, all right, touche. He goes, I got you, he goes, all right, just make. So those are little moments that you keep for yourself. Didn't talk about guitar, but hey, at least we were human to each other and we got to hang out and we were you know, friends for a little bit and hung out after that show and I watched him from the side of the stage. It was incredible, incredible. That's nice. Um, did you ever wear the flares again? Hell no. I went and I think I cut him off before he went on stage. Uh, Good. <laughs> I no, feel, you know what he said? You know what he said? He actually said, he goes, I go, and you know what I actually said to him afterwards, after the show? And I go, you know what? I was thinking while I was watching you on stage, Edward, I said, you used to wear these fucking things. As a matter of fact, I believe you had him on on the first, maybe even the second album. He goes, he goes, yeah. He goes, you're right about that. But if you notice, if you go back, we had him fucking like airbrush out, like get rid of him like in no, the big did movie, they? Movie. yeah oh my god yeah no i feel bad now taking the mickey out of your um queen concert outfit <laughs> yeah there you go there you go making fun of me now like you know but yeah. i'll take it i'll take it no you, you know well that's fine um so are you still enjoying it are you still enjoying everything do you still love the guitar I do. I, you know, I, I think, I think, you know, uh, a guitar is, I always looked at a guitar as, as another human friend that, you know, and, that, and that's probably because you spend so much time with it. And, and, you know, I used to think of it as a girlfriend when I didn't have a girlfriend, but it was one of those things where you kind of like, you do, you haven't, you haven't, you have a love for it. And sometimes you break up with it. And sometimes you're just like, I can't fucking pick up. I can't look at you. I can't look at you right now. I'm burnt out. I just, I need a break and we need, we need some time off and, and that's okay. I, I, a lot of people feel like when you say that, it's like, oh, you're not a true guitar player. You know, if you don't live with it, walk around with it every fucking day, that's not true. You, you have to, you have to sometimes take, get, get some clarity and go back to it and maybe jump. I, sometimes I jump on the piano that's behind me and, and I'll, I'll have a, 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 a cheat on my guitar with the piano for, for a few weeks and, and, and that'll open up some new ideas or drums or whatever it may be, or maybe you do nothing and, and, and you go back to it. And sometimes you, you lose inspiration. Sometimes you're fucking obsessed. For me, I, you know, there was moments that I went through it that I changed. And I think more, more, more recently, I probably fell back in love over the last, like, I, I want to say like three or four years. And, and I credit the generation X for a little bit. I got re-inspired a little bit. Cause I was still playing, but I got more like that kid inspired version of like, I want to fucking do some shit and, you know, create some new shit or yeah. new, extreme, new extreme album. Like I'm I'll go for a bit more blood than maybe like, you know, take down your heroes. Like you used to want to do, you know, back in the day, like go after mm -hmm. the people that you fucking like, you know, show them do shit that you can't wait to share with people, you know, as a guitar player and, uh, and, and being on stage with Zach and Ingve and, Vi and, and Tosin, you know, a bunch of heroes that I grew up with and 
jamming with them, rehearsing with them, it kind of got me excited again to like, you know, because I realized we're all we're all just a bunch of kids, even at the age we're at. We're all, we literally were a bunch of arrested developed fucking <laughs> punks backstage sitting there fucking talking about guitar and sharing music and doing all stuff and still the fire was still there you know that that you that kid was still in us and that really got me excited again and it it, it uh, you know you, you are the, the you are the uh the company you keep and i think you need to be around people sometimes that fucking inspire you and 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 you know so, you know so it got me excited it it, it it definitely uh got me got the juices flowing for guitar in the new extreme album that's been done for a year now but we 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 were going to release it last march and the fucking pandemic came along and we, we 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 debated and debated and the fans are still busting my balls every fucking day on Instagram. Where's that album? And it's hard to explain that it's like we could easily put it out. Easily. It just there it is. Hey, it's on iTunes, go get it, or it's on Spotify, go get it. But we're a touring band. And it might be a little old school thinking. We wanna we wanna come and play this thing for you and we wanna release it when we come and play it for you. Not 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 at the same time. It'll be soon. But as, as we want to, we want to be able to like put it out and then have you be excited about it, live with it, come see the shows, come to the UK, come here, come there, and do it. Now, if the pandemic keeps going the way it is, then we're not going to be able to have that fucking cake and eat it too. We're gonna because right now, so we started talking. And by the way, we didn't have labels then because we were excited about that back then. We were going to start going to new labels, but labels were shutting down. Yeah, people weren't making deals. Yeah, there was Zoom meetings and stuff, but they didn't even know what the fuck was happening with them and financially people aren't even going back to offices yet and shit like that so we didn't want to shop the extreme album as well in a time where people are going really you want to talk about doing a record contract when people are fucking dying and we don't even know what's happening and the world is shut down so we said hit pause and and let's and, and now we're started to have meetings again we over the last few weeks and started doing putting our deals in place so we can get this thing out here. and i'm really really excited about it as a guitar player to share that with you and, and everybody Great. I, I think it's good to put it out now, though, because I kind of think that everyone could listen to the album and then know everything on the album. And then when you play it, they'll be singing along. You're, you're absolutely right. In theory, you're, you're right in that way. But you're even feeling more about that now than you were last March or April yes, or May. Or June. You know what I mean? It yes. wasn't it wasn't about them knowing it or not singing. It was about where their headspace was to allow it to be a soundtrack that mattered like in because we, we could think well maybe this is what our fans might need you know they need some music to get through what they're getting through but a part of us was like that is true but but there was another part of us that's like you know what why not use it we decided to do the the other part of it which is let's use it as a celebratory thing let's use it as a celebration of getting through this fucking thing where people are really open and can't wait to get together because I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. When we start doing shows. There's going to be fucking orgies out there. It's like the summer of love going. I don't know what the fuck is going to happen because you know, it's been so long, yeah. who knows, but I want to, I'd love to have a soundtrack for that, you know, like, and, 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 and bring some guitar, you know, bring some old school guitar back in the way. And when I say that, I mean, like there was an era of guitar players that I'm from, that live in this pentatonic world where they used to they used to like live in a place where hey you got to be creative within this there's a box here there's this thing yeah. here like eddie did or like brian did or like the, my heroes did or randy rose where it's not so far out of the box where a lot of guitar players are doing that i mean you go i'm, I'm, I'm i follow guitar players now on fucking instagram that i'm just like i don't get it but i love it like yeah. i mean Everything from like the, the alternate picking to the fucking, you know, the thing to the fucking, uh, uh, the, the, the crazy arpeggio. Sweep. People aren't even moving and there's more shit. They're playing circles around me. And I'm just like, I wait, 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 let me hear that again. And I love it as a fan, but it's not who I am. I still, I might be even be influenced by it or whatever. And I, and I, and I, it's not, it's not, I'm not dogging in any of the new, yeah, I love where it's going and, and stuff like that. But there's also, I love the fact that my limitations of who I am and the guitar players that I grew up with in that generation had limitations uh, as far as the language and how how far out before it became a little bit jazzier or a little too classical or a little too whatever it was going to be within rock and roll. Mm -hmm. Still kind of in that bluesy rock and roll place, but still making it. You, I think you know what I mean. It was there was there was a. Yeah. It was just like late seventies, late eight to the late eighties kind of thing that a 10 year span that was just like lived there. And that's who I am. I'm not trying to go back there. It's always who I'm going to be. So I love the fact that 
sometimes when I listen to what I just did on the extreme album, I'm so excited about it and I can't wait to play it for you. And then there's a part of me that's going to go like, man, some of these new guitars may go like, that's it. <laughs> you know, that's what you're doing. But I realize, but I realize that it is special for what, for the generation that I'm in and the generation of who I am as a guitar player. So I'm excited about sharing it to you as my strength. Do you know what I mean? And what, what I do. No, I get that. Who, who are some of the YouTubers that you're listening to? Cause there's one guy that I, that just blows my mind. What's his name? It's called Zeppelin. Zeppelin Barat, I wonder, I, oh, shit, what's his, uh, I can't, he's got, he's got a funny name. Zeppelin something beginning with B. Oh wait, Ze Zeppelin, Zeppelin? Let me see, let me, you know what, let me, I, I, we gotta get this right, cause you know, these guys, let me see, I'll, I'll tell, I'll literally tell you exactly, cause I, I hate doing this and leaving somebody out that I that I think deserves a little bit of a shout out here. I, I, like, I like how we're both putting our glasses yeah, on. I like, yeah, I like how we both try to hide uh, our age, but then we go, oh, you're, you're, you're older, you have to wear glasses, and we get it. No. Um, All right, here we go. Zeppelin um, Benatra, yeah. Wow, I, can, I'm, I don't, I'm not sure that I, um, that yeah. I'm, Evans. Nathaniel Murphy is his real name, but his Instagram page is Zeppelin Bonatra. Bonatra? But he's oh, not. Okay. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to send me you're gonna have to send me the, these names and I'll uh Yeah, you should check them out. You'll like you'll like him, I think. Okay. Who else we got here that I'm like I check in and just to see how he could kick my ass. Like my thing is how can this guy kick my ass today? And how can you show me some things we got uh, from me? Let me see what we got here. Steve Vai, you, you ever hear of him? I haven't heard of him. No, is he quite good? I get right above Brian Harold May. Let me see. Uh, we have um, there's a, 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 a an Italian girl that I think is great named uh, Silvia Boschiero. That I think she's really cool. I check in on her and see what she's up to. Um, who else we got? We got. Um, let me see, let me see, let me see. Uh, she goes obviously in Neely Brosh, lives in Las Vegas. She just, I posted a, a, a solo of her doing play with me recently that was ridiculous and was a little better than when I do it. So I will never post her again. I, I think I saw that. Was that on your Instagram? Yeah, you might've seen that. Um, got yeah. this young kid named Owen. He goes under Owen Davey. Owen Dot Davy. Who else we got here? Uh, you got Mateus Sasato. You must know Mateus. Yes, I do. Mateus has recently retired from Instagram. He sent a message saying that like, he was just like, I'm out. I need a vacation from that. And I get it. I get exactly what he's doing. He just like, uh, he was just like, you know, he probably had a little bit of a coming to Jesus in his life. And he's like, you know, because he came from that generation of being discovered on Instagram and doing those 30 second, 10 second bits. And, and I think, unless you probably go away, like for me, it's cooler to do it now. But if I was back then, or if I was a new guy, fuck, it, it would probably mess derail me from my band and everything else. I'm not sure. It's funny that, um, you know, you should be on this show that you and I should meet and stuff. Because when I was at music college, I was, you know, I started off by playing the saxophone. And um I one of the there was I was the only girl on the course and okay. all the guys all played guitars. Everyone was a guitarist apart from me, being a girl and playing the sax. And yeah, yeah. um, so I was like, I want to try the guitar. So one of the guys tried to teach me how to play more than words. <laughs> and he was like, Do you know what? You're so bad. He's like, I can't teach you. You're terrible. No way. Yeah. So that was it. That was my my uh, first kind of. Oh, that that's class. inspiring. That's fucking inspiring. <laughs> right <laughs> wow talk about it words of encouragement you suck don't even pick up the instrument ever again <laughs> yeah. yeah i know so then it took a, it took a pandemic for me to take the balls to pick it back up again that's great i'm excited well we hope uh, to to hear some stuff that you're doing I, I do you write much or you just jam for fun of it or i'm just literally in my bedroom just tr i'm learning i'm like that's I'm, so cool i think i've only been playing since april so wow. That's awesome. That's amazing. Good for you. I, I tell people when we were doing the Generation Axe tour and there's, you know, the crowd's going to be the majority, I would hope is going to be guitar players because there's six, five of us out there. Yeah. And, and whenever I sit down before I play Midnight Express, I always say to turn the lights on and I just 
show of hands, like how many guitar players in the room? And of course, like 70, 80% go up in the air, except for a few girlfriends or boyfriends of, of, of guitar players that came just to, to vibe about. But I, I tell them, I tell them, I go, look, I go, you've already succeeded. And they're like, they're looking at me like, what I go, you're playing guitar. Play, playing guitar, and you know this now, even from playing in your bedroom and how cool that feels and doing what you're doing and learning, that that's, that's the dream. Like that's really the goal at the end of the day is just to pick up the thing and be able to play a few songs or play a few riffs or write something or do something on it. Because the truth is, I, I try to tell them that because I tell them like, look, I have so many stages in me as a guitar player from being in that bedroom and yeah. learning Randy Rhodes and, 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 and Zeppelin and, and Van Halen to then, you know, to, to a club with a band with nobody there, you know, to playing covers. So like, wow, a, a decent band to maybe getting a record deal to wow, on the radio to I, I, you see all these things. And I said, and here I am sitting in front of you, like full circle, really, at the end of the day. And it's possible to be sitting up here. All I did it was for for the love of guitar for really just picking up an instrument and doing it for the love of it and wanting to play it. And, but the one thing I will say is that feeling has never changed. Whether wow. there was, it's exciting that, oh, wow, I might be looking at an arena or when we got up on stage and played in front of three people in a fucking club in Boston, it felt just as good. It felt just as hungry and just as passionate. And we went all out, all in. The shows were the same as they were in front of Wembley Stadium. And I needed to tell them that because that's the accomplishment is going to bed at night knowing you're playing, you're fucking doing the thing you love. Because really the rest of it is just, all right, I sold some records. All right, I got to jam with this guy, that guy, whatever. It's great. I'm not, yeah. I'm not putting it down. But it never changes the feelings of the kids that we are backstage when me and Steve are just forming up and we're still like our friends in the garage talking about this lick or talking about this song, talking about Queen or talking about whatever. That's the same exact fucking conversation. There's nothing intellectual about it. There's nothing like, wow, those are the guys. I wonder what they talk about. They talk about the same bullshit that everybody else talks about in their garage. <laughs> so trust me, you've succeeded and you've done it. And, and that's, that's really what it is, is. Just keep doing it for the love of it. Yeah. Every time you walk out on stage, it feels like Madison Square Garden anyways. Yeah. I like that. I mean, I'm, I, I always think, though, musicians, you, you, do, you do suffer from Peter Pan syndrome. You know, you like, you, ne you never grow up. Like you say, it's the same yeah, conversations wherever you... The rest of development. I'm <laughs> <laughs> right. I think on that note, um, that's a nice way to wrap it up. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, that was good. It was nice hanging with you and talking to you and catching up. I haven't seen, yeah. you, in a, seen you in a minute. In a, in a like while. 2017, I think it was. Wow. It was nuts. Incredible. Yeah. Well, I look forward to seeing you again out there in the in the out there in the fields, as they as the Who song puts it. In the it. trenches, uh, yeah. Trenches, uh, and uh, man, it's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. And uh, man, I, one thing's for sure is I, I not that I ever have, but if there's something, is a lesson to be learned for all of us that want to be around music and live music whether we're playing it in the crowd or whatever it is yeah. to not take it for granted man it's well, it's yeah. it got taken away it got taken away and now we get it we get it yeah, yeah. you're gonna be good <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, nice to see you, Kai. thank you yeah, so much for having you. me on appreciate it oh, thanks for coming on i'll see you soon see take you. care bye -bye. of yourself bye, -bye. Yeah,